Ahava blessings, welcome. Welcome to this episode of Hold the Shahina. This podcast is here to support us during this journey of remembering, integrating, embodying, awakening to our soul essence. I am your host. My name is Arya. I am a Reiki master, energy, sound healer, and an ordained Magdalene priestess. And I am your host and your guide on this journey. Happy Friday, happy day of the goddess. Today we are going to talk about embodiment. We are going to talk about spirituality. And we're going to go over what it means to feel embodied, to feel grounded, to be living spirituality in your day to day. I think that um, to start, I will share a little bit about my background. My family is of Catholic descent, um, being Spanish, Peruvian. So there is that lineage of Catholicism. Also, there is a hidden Sephardic Jew-ish lineage in my maternal line. And my grandmother converted to Buddhism, I think it was in the 70s. And uh, then my mother later converted, and I was born and raised Buddhist. Now, the Buddhism that was practiced was one that um, taught that all in all living beings possess the inherent potential for Buddhahood, enlightenment, that infinity oneness consciousness within. It's just a matter of cultivating that nature. It taught that cause and effect is a law of the universe. Granted, it's only one law of the universe, but that was one of the tenets that it specified that specific law of the universe. And then there was that um, life and the environment are one. So there was that oneness of your external world with your internal world. So it was all about the personal struggle to conquer your karmas. And growing up in this, um, there was that element of oneness, but there also was a lot of separation because it was a very masculine type of mentality. It was a very go, go, go. You have to conquer and defeat your obstacles. So um, I, it didn't always resonate with me. I received many what they call benefits. However, I always knew there was something more. There was something beyond, beyond what I was being told. So I sought out that beyond going into the mysticism, going into astrology, studying different texts, delving into um, mythologies of, from all over the world, delving into ancient lineages. And that was my way of um, seeking out the feminine, the, the creative Shakti element. I studied yoga. Um, I practice yoga as well, not diligently, diligently, but I did practice. It was one of the things that I did delve into. So for me, what was missing was that connection to the feminine, that connection to creative essence, source, God, goddess, that infinite cosmic oneness. So as I got older, um, I moved away. Um, I actually went through periods where I moved towards Buddhism and away from it. One of the things that I think being Buddhist gave me was that foundation of cosmic unity, oneness, all life being interconnected. We are all mirrors of one another. We are all mirrors observing one another. So we are all aspects of that infinite God, goddess, source consciousness. That was one of the things that it gave me. One of the things that it didn't give me 
was that feeling of non-judgment. And this has a lot to do with um, what we see in, um, in the spiritual world now. Um, and what we've seen, we've seen evolutions of it. There is the, there is the talking. We say we believe in unity consciousness. We say we believe in oneness. We say we believe in non-judgment and, you know, loving our neighbor as we love ourselves and loving our enemy. We say that we do, but in practice, it's very, very different for a lot of us because we've been hurt, because we've been conditioned a certain way, because we've had certain experiences that have cemented certain thought patterns in our, in our psyche. So it can be, um, it can be a little, it can feel and it can be very daunting to start unraveling those beliefs. And some of these beliefs may make us feel that we are not worthy, that we are not good enough, that we are, um, that we're somehow lacking in some ways. And I think that's also another element that Buddhism didn't necessarily address for me. So I went and did, went into my rabbit holes and did my studies and sought out different therapies and different modes of healing, different energy type of healings. I was attuned to Reiki when I was 19, 18, 19. Um, I practiced Reiki. I was attuned to other forms of Reiki and energy healing. I went into shamanic energy healing. I went into all other kinds of cosmologies, all in that search for the divine feminine. For that energy of creation. So the divine feminine, that frequency of oneness, of creation, is really what what allows us to come into union with our soul. We often think that we need to chase after something. And this was another thing that um, I really didn't resonate with with Buddhism. It was always you had to go after your mission. But what I've found is that the more that you align with God, goddess, with Allah, with source, divine, pure light energy, the more that you will naturally fall into alignment There is no need for that fight, that struggle, that going against the grain, that swimming against the current energy. There's no need for that because the feminine energy of creation is the energy that births all things and will gift you greater wisdom, greater alignment, greater insight, and a refinement and a alignment with your unique, authentic expression of your soul. And that is one of the biggest gifts that the spirituality that I practice now really has given me. It has given me the tools to strip away the layers of self, the layers of false identity that have kept me in many ways blocked and contained and repeating the same karmic cycles and patterns. We cannot heal standing in the same place where we have been wounded. We cannot heal in that same environment. We have to give ourselves a different support system, a different environment in order for us to cement and ground whatever healing we are looking to activate within us. Because it's all a matter of activating. It's all a matter of bringing our awareness and our consciousness to what needs to be healed. So allowing yourself to feel into 
what needs to be healed. Allow things to trigger you if they do. And from those triggers, ask, get curious and ask questions. What is this showing me about my belief system? What is this showing me about the subconscious patterns in my life that I am inadvertently repeating by not taking this invitation to delve into this subject that perhaps I don't necessarily want to deal with. So I find it very liberating to allow yourself to feel all aspects of your humanity and ask them, what are they showing you? What are they teaching you? How can they align you more fully and more authentically with divine light, with your soul, with the essence that you came here to embody and to share with the world? It is, it is very easy to think that we are spiritual and Therefore, certain things don't apply to us. We should never feel angry or upset or whatever. Or somehow we're better than people who are not awake. Or you're better than someone because of the particular diet that you follow. Or you're better than someone because you do X number of hours of meditation. All of these feelings or instances where we compare ourselves to others thinking that we are superior and they are inferior serve only to keep us in separation that is the that is the point i guess of those lower frequencies of judgment guilt shame fear doubt insecurity um self-worth issues all of that all of those keep us in separation, keep us thinking that we are not infinite, that we are not source, God, goddess, oneness, cosmic, galactic consciousness in a human form. They keep us believing and, and they feed into the distortion and the lie, just like thinking that someone outside of you can can basically control you. Nothing and no one outside of you can harm or control you without your permission. You have to buy into and agree to that energetic exchange. So we come to energy. Everything is energy. We are in a constant energetic exchange. We are in a constant ebb and flow and this is also very important when it comes to the relationships that we cement particularly those relationships um, intimate relationships the woman receives so when we are haphazard about who we engage with we are allowing their karma and their traumas and their stuff to come into us and to become a part of us. So this is why being conscious, being self-aware, and doing our own purification process is so important, particularly for women, because women hold the creative energy that much stronger because we are the beings that can birth from the unseen into the seen. So our sexual creative energy is that much more potent. We can transform our entire families, our entire lineage, our communities when we choose to heal and to remember that we are active participants in this dance of creation. 
So groundedness, it is very important to always be, always be looking at yourself, not through a critical lens, but with a lens of curiosity and with a lens of awareness of what it is that you are looking to align with. Are you looking to align with the and bring in the highest light, the highest iteration of your soul? Are you looking to align to the highest timeline for your soul evolution? Or do you just want to continue the status quo? Either answer is perfectly fine. Or there may be certain things in your life that you are ready to take on and other things that you're still kind of holding on to and you're like, I'm not quite ready to deal with that. That's okay as well. There are so many ways to engage with your soul, to commune with the divine and to allow your soul to inhabit your heart and to flow through you and express. And there is no one way. And we are fortunate that there is no one way. Because in other realms, it can be very boring because all it is is absolute unity and love. And there is no duality. There is no even a, 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 I don't even know, I guess a trinity. Like there are other worlds where there are different, it's not just a polarity, it's maybe three options or five there are so many ways that creation has chosen to express. And there are other realms where all is oneness, all is love, all is happiness and rainbows and butterflies. And it's kind of boring. So some beings, some star seeds, have chosen to incarnate on earth to experience and to master energy, to master weather, to master the trials of whether we can forget our infinite oneness and remember in our human form. That is the magic of our experience, our human experience and our soul awakening. There is, um, there is a lot going on energetically. I don't know if you felt it this past week, but I, like I had a hard time sleeping either that or I was vivid, incredibly vivid dreams. And then of course there's, you know, the needing to sleep at weird hours because my body is, there's so much energy. So now is really a time to be gentle and to be grounded in your practices. Be grounded in your body. And many star seeds, we have a love-hate relationship with our physical body, with this dense earth plane. We don't want to be here. I mean, how many times have I said, oh, just you know, I, I want the aliens to come just get me off this rock. <laughs> there have been so many times that I myself has said that because it feels so dense and so heavy and so hard. Why does it have to be this difficult? And then in those moments, I remember that this is part of that game of mastery. This is part of that developing my mastery over energy, my mastery of my energy, my mastery of what I give my attention to. And it is the same for all of us. There is a ton of energy out there. And it's up to us what we choose to align with. Do we choose to align with the highest light, the highest vibrations creation? Or do we choose lower frequencies and destruction and there may be points in time when you're that's what you're choosing and that's okay but we always in every moment have the choice we have the choice as to what we wish to express through our sacred vessel we have the choice of whether we wish to live a consecrated life a life that is made sacred by our intention, by our alignment, by our 
consciousness by our choices, our words, knowing that we are affecting the very fabric of the collective through our thoughts and our words. Everything is interconnected. So during this time when Mars is coming into conjunction with all sort of with Venus and with Pluto, all in Aquarius, there's a whole stellium happening in Aquarius. It's time to look into doing things a different way. It's time to create new structures. It's time to truly step into our power and step into our sovereignty, liberate ourselves from the old traumas, karmas, limiting beliefs. It's, it's up to us. We are the ones that, that are anchoring these higher frequencies on earth. And we can't anchor them properly if we are ourselves still judging, still guilting, still shaming, still blaming other people, thinking that somehow they're not doing it enough, they're not spiritual enough, or they can't be spiritual because they're not connecting to the galactic realms. That's ridiculous. The purpose of any of every single us, every single one of us star seeds. The purpose of us being incarnate is for us to anchor the higher dimensional frequencies in our bodies and on this earth. We cannot do this from a space of separation. We cannot do this from a space of, oh, well, I'm better than you. I'm more spiritual. We can't do this from a place of guilt or shame or blame or unworthiness. We can't do that work if we are lying to ourselves and using spirituality or plant medicine or alcohol or whatever to escape our current situation. We can't properly hold that template, activate the light body within our physical body and anchor and harness and hold that infinite light of creation, anchor it into the earth, support Gaia in this ascension journey. If we are not fully present, not fully grounded and stable, and yes, we absolutely need to have abundance, peace of mind, abundance of creativity, abundance of resources, abundance of um choices. We absolutely need that. There's nothing wrong with handling your business first. Whatever it is that you need to do to actualize and put yourself in a position where you feel safe, where you feel protected and fully supported, do your practices to secure that. Because if we're not, if we ourselves don't feel safe in our physical body, safe in our home, we can't hold and anchor anything for anyone else. And women particularly, we give too much. And granted, there's an endless supply, but if we're not tuning in to the highest frequencies and allowing them to constantly pour through us, then we have a finite amount of resources. So again, coming back to your heart, coming back to your alignment to the divine, coming back to receiving and accessing that infinite light of creation and allowing it to pour into your physical body and anchor in your body, that is so important. So how do we raise our vibration? We raise our vibration by being aware and conscious of what we are giving our attention to by grounding, putting your feet on the earth, walking out in nature, hugging a tree, gardening, working with the earth is wonderful, sun gazing, moon gazing, um, gaze at the sun in the early parts of the morning or the late afternoon. That allows the light codes to activate in your retina. And it also produces vitamin D, which is a hormone. So 
hormonal balance, your body, you will notice that if you follow me on Instagram, I post a lot about nutrition. Why? Because if your body is not healthy, then there are blockages. There's absence of light in certain places. And if there's absence of light in certain places, then the energy is not flowing fully and thoroughly. So addressing, getting to the root cause of whatever is going on with you physically, super important. Eating nutritional food, just let's stop eating the crap. Um, I don't like, and yes, don't eat the crap. No hormones, no antibiotics, no, you know, all of that. If it's made in a lab, that's not for you because your, your body was not made in a lab. But also don't be hard on yourself. Let's not take things to an extreme just because you are organic and whatever 90% of the time don't beat yourself up about the 10 you know get eat drink clean water drink lots of water stay hydrated please like these are very intense times energetically solar flares massive solar flares really like affecting the electromagnetic energy of the earth and that's affecting your electromagnetic energy so lots of water go out in nature hug a tree, spend time with your pets, um, have harmonious communication with your loved ones, cultivate that. And if you notice that they aren't happening, it's okay to pull away and just come back to your heart, meditate, yoga, exercise, paint, draw, dance, sound healings, all of these naturally raise your vibration. All of these really reading a good book, one that inspires you. If something inspires you and lights your soul on fire, that is exactly what you need to be doing. Anchor into your heart, like come home to your heart. Know that you are infinite source light, God, goddess, coming through allow yourself to connect to your soul this is this is definitely the time when everything's happening don't give in to fear if you notice yourself feeling fearful or anxious come back to your heart come back to your breath remember the breath on the other side of that breath is divine light it's the Shekhinah. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the divine that is on the other side of that breath. Your breath is your communion to the divine. It's, in, it's allowing yourself to receive that infinite light and infuse every cell in your body with that. So your nutrition is very important. Optimal hormonal balance, optimal uh, nutritional um balance of the vitamins and minerals in your body, magnesium, some people, but look into what it is that you need because everyone is different. Everyone has different nutritional needs. There is no one size fits all. This is why self-awareness, asking yourself questions, tuning into your body and always seeing how you're feeling is very important. All of these things, all of this awareness and care for you for your physical sacred vessel, all serve to raise our awareness, raise our vibration, raise our consciousness, all to the point where we are shining and we are sharing that infinite light with one another. So what else can you do? I mentioned drinking water, oh, crystals, working with the mineral kingdom crystals are very beautiful to work with in order to attune yourself to a higher resonance and i think that i think i covered all the things oh i didn't mention that if you live near a body of water go and spend time by that body of water. If you can put your feet or your body into it, great. If you can just listen to the water, listen to the water, 
connect with the earth in whatever way and ask ask for her wisdom ask for her insight if you see a beautiful tree or a beautiful plant thank it for its beauty maybe give it a good sniff and ask it if it has any wisdom to share with you and in that vein be nice to your home greet it when you come home Ask it for protection when you leave. Everything has a consciousness. Plants, trees, the wind, the house around you, the carpet, the dish on your, that your food is on. Everything has an energy, a consciousness. Bless your water. That's the other thing. Bless your water and bless your food. Even if it's just a couple of seconds of thank you. Bless your water with love, with gratitude, with grace. And just send that light and that love into that water, into that salad, into that piece of food, into that sandwich, whatever it is that we're eating. Take the time to bless it. Take the time to come into sacred union with every action that you are undertaking. And if you forget, remember, don't get guilty. Don't don't feel bad. Just, you forgot. It's okay. Come back to it. It takes time to develop a pattern. New habits take 21 days to activate and 40 days to, to ground in your body. The number 40 is very, very important. 40 days in the desert, 40 days to cement a new habit. Like 40 is very powerful. It's a very grounding, stabilizing number. So take that time. So many of us go through life just we're going through the motions. Slow down. Look at the places in your life where you can open yourself to the divine, to trust, to that infinite love the divine mother, father have for us. Allow yourself the space to commune with the divine, to commune with your soul. When we commune with the soul, we're communing with the divine. There is no separation. When you commune with the tree, we're communing with the divine. When you commune with your food, you're communing with the divine. And with that, I do want to give a shout out and give a huge thank you to everyone I met at the Conscious Life Expo. I, it was a great event, great chats, great workshops. I was so happy to meet so many, so many pure souls really seeking and really looking for ways to activate and embody their soul. It really was beautiful. And so many younger people and, and so many families came together, which was wonderful. So I saw a lot of Hispanic families as well. I, I was actually even wondering if I should um, do an episode or two every once in a while in Spanish. So if you would like me, Si, si les gustaría que haga un episodio o unos episodios en español, en castellano, voy a tener que practicar mi castellano, por favor, um, me, me dan, comentan abajo y me dicen si les, gust- si les gustaría eso. I'm going to have my work cut out for me because I'm going to have to practice my, um, my Spanish. Uh, I'm bilingual. I speak, actually, I speak several languages, but Spanish is my native tongue but I think in English now. So it's, I, I, I'm seeking out ways to come back and make that more of a home language so that I can fluidly transition from one to the other, from all of them to the other, ideally. So um, I was really, really happy, and I will be announcing the names of the winners of the drawing for 30, three 30-minute 30 sessions with me, 
one-to-one -one sessions. So stay tuned for that. I will be reaching out to you within the next 24 hours. So I am so blessed to have met so many of you and I hope to see you again next year, if not sooner, or in one of the courses. I have a Cosmic Soul Alchemy membership that is launched and that involves monthly circles with me, Q&A, wisdom transmissions, sound healings, energy healings, all the things. Check that out. I linked it below as well as March 22nd. My sound healing course is launching Crystalline Sound Alchemy. Link for that is also below. Um, if it's not below, um, it will be soon. <laughs> so stay tuned. If you guys like this, please share, please subscribe, please um, be sure to tune in to the sound activation that is next. Um, Five-star review, subscribe, follow, comment below, share all the things. I really do appreciate you. I'm noticing that this podcast is reaching more and more places, including Central, South, and the Caribbean. So um, I, I'm very happy that you guys are receiving this, and I hope that you are enjoying this and that it is serving you on your journey. Have a blessed Day of the Goddess. Have a beautiful weekend and may this jumpstart you on your next phase of evolution. Ahava, have a blessed day.